हेलो एंड वेलकम टू माय न्यू कोर्स एजोर सिक्वल डेटाबेस कनेक्ट यूजिंग सर्विस एंड पॉइंट एंड प्राइवेट एंड पॉइंट एजोर सिक्वल डेटाबेस इज ऑलवेज रनिंग ऑन द लेटेस्ट स्टेबल वर्जन ऑफ सिक्वल सर्वर डेटाबेस इंजन एंड पैच्ड ओएस विद 99.99 परसेंट अवेलेबिलिटी इन दिस कोर्स वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू कनेक्ट एजोर सिक्वल डेटाबेस यूजिंग सर्विस एंड पॉइंट एंड प्राइवेट एंड पॉइंट वॉट इज सर्विस एंड पॉइंट Virtual Network Service Endpoint provides secure and direct connectivity to Azure services over an optimized route over a Azure backbone network. Endpoints allow you to secure your critical Azure service resources to only your virtual network. Service Endpoint enables private IP address in VNet to reach the endpoint of a Azure service without needing a public IP address to the VNet. In the given image, in the left hand side, we have a virtual network and a subnet and one VM is deployed inside that subnet. In the right hand side, we have a Azure SQL database. We can connect to SQL DB from virtual machine using service endpoint. Benefits of service endpoint. Improved security for your Azure service resources. Service endpoints enable securing of Azure service resources to your virtual network by extending VNet identity to the service. Optimal routing for Azure service traffic from your virtual network. Endpoints always take service traffic directly from the, your virtual network to the service on the Microsoft Azure backbone network. Simple to set up with less management overhead. You no longer need reserved public IP addresses in your virtual network to secure Azure resources through IP, IP firewall. There are no network address translation or gateway device required to set up the service endpoint. You can configure service endpoint through a single selection on a subnet. There is no extra overhead to maintain the service endpoints. Let's start our first demo on connecting Azure SQL DB using service endpoints. Let's start our first video, how to connect SQL Server database using service endpoint. So before starting, I would like to introduce the resources which I have in Azure Cloud. You can see this is the SQL Server which I have provisioned. It is having one database here, name is MyDB. I have one VM and this VM is having public IP so that I can, I can take remote of this VM. And this VM also connected to the virtual network, which is VNet GSWP default. The third thing which we, I have is virtual network. The IP address is 10.0.0.6 16. And it is having one subnet named default. And the IP address you can see 10.0.0.0 24. And if I so if I show you this property of this VNet subnet, I do not have any service endpoint enabled here. There are zero service endpoint enabled. Now let me take the remote of my VM. So since I'm using Mac, so in the Mac we have this Microsoft remote desktop application which I can use to connect. Let me open SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, so SSMS is open now. Let me try to connect the SQL Server. So you can see I have, I'm using FQDN of the SQL Server, SQL Server, gswp.database.windows.net. I have this SQL admin user there and let me try to put my password. Hit connect and now it is asking me to sign in so that it will add my public IP into the networking area of this SQL server. So before signing in, let me show you to the SQL server. If I go here, if I go to networking, I am using the public network. 
but there is nothing here. I am not using any virtual network here and I am not using any firewall rule anything. So let me try to sign in so that it will automatically add my public IP to the SQL server. Okay, so this is my public IP. Let me try to add it. And I am connected to the Azure SQL Server. And in the meantime, let me try to show you the networking area once again. Let me refresh it. And if I go down, here you can see my public IP has been added into the firewall rule so that it is allowing my traffic from this IP and that's why I'm able to connect it, which is not the target of this demo. Let me remove this one. And here you can see allow Azure services and resources to access this server. Let me try to tick this one and save it. By ticking this one, it is allowing all the trusted Azure SQL services to connect to my SQL server without adding IP address, VNet, private endpoint. I just want to show you as a additional thing so you can use it if you want in future in your project that if you allow this Azure services and resources to access the server, you don't have to mention the IPs, the VNets and the private endpoint. It will directly allow all the trusted, remember trusted Azure SQL services. By the way, Azure DevOps is not a trusted Azure SQL service. So if you allow this here, you cannot connect from Azure DevOps to this Azure SQL server. So since I have connected here and I will show you into my VM, let me disconnect and let me connect again. And now you can see I'm able to connect again, but this time the IP is not mentioned here. There is no IP here. If I refresh my page, you can see there is no IP, but since I'm allowing this service, it is, I'm able to connect. Let me remove this also. Now we are going to create the service endpoint. So our VM, our VM is created inside VNet as GSWP default subnet let me try to add over here in the fire uh, in the vnet network so you can name this rule anything i'm just putting the default subscription then which vnet i want to use i have only one vnet and which subnet i want to use i have only one subnet and now you see here it is saying the selected subnet does not have service endpoint enabled for microsoft.sql I already showed you this, that's over here, I don't have any service endpoint enabled. So if I choose to enable it, I can enable it from here and then select OK and it will add it into my virtual network rule. And let's go here and cancel it and let's try to open it again. Go down and now you can see I have this service endpoint enabled automatically because I am trying to enable it here. Now I have added my VNet and the different subnet over here and now I don't have my public IP here and I am not checking this allow Azure services to connect to the SQL server. So let's go again to our VM. This is our VM where we are connecting. Let me disconnect and connect again. I'm connected again. Why? Because now my VM which is deployed in a VNet and that VNet is having service endpoint enabled. I, I should say subnet is having service endpoint enabled for SQL and it is allowed into the networking area in the networking area of our SQL server. So this is public access. And now here you can see we have allow our subnet. And now since we have allowed this subnet, so the, our SQL server 
is visible for all the resources which, which are deployed over here in the this subnet so now if you create for example web application if you create for example functions you create anything over there they can reach to our sql server because we are allowing this access from this subnet to the sql server now let's remove this and let's test that are we still able to connect or not so we, i have removed this access and there is no access is allowed in the networking area of sql server and let's test and i hope this should not allow me to connect to the sql server because we have no rule which can allow direct traffic from our vm to the sql server and now you can see cannot open sql server requested by login client is not allowed to access the sql server okay so now what we are trying to do that for allowing sql server we need to add the service endpoint over here before starting next topic let me take a moment to ask you for hit likes like button and subscribe to my channel if you like my courses let's start our next topic private endpoint connectivity to azure sql database what is private endpoint a private endpoint is a network interface that uses a private ip address from your vnet this network interface connects you privately and securely to a service that's powered by azure private link by enabling a private endpoint you are bringing the service into your virtual network when you use private endpoints traffic is secured to a private link resource the platform validates network connections allowing only those that reach the specific private link resource private endpoint support network policies network policy enables support for network security group also called nsgs user defined route tables and application security groups let's start our second demo on connecting azure sql database using private endpoint let's start our second demo use private endpoint to connect to the sql server there are many times it has happened that you have to use private endpoint whenever there is no public endpoint is allowed so for example in your organization the public access should be permanently disabled so if the public access is permanently disabled that means you cannot use service endpoint you cannot use direct allowing the ip address in the firewall rule you cannot use azure services to connect to your sql your sql server is totally protected from any public access let me make it safe so that our sql server is not allowing any public access not from any vnet not from by default from allowing services or by adding ip address directly so now we are disabling the public access but now if i want to connect i have to create a private endpoint over here so let's create a private endpoint quickly i'm using my same subscription same resource group and the private endpoint name is sql server hyphen private endpoint in the same reason i'm creating right now then which resource it is for sql server and since i have only one sql server so it is taking that one which is here and now virtual network i am having one virtual network i am selecting that one and the same default vnet default subnet i don't want any policy right now i am allowing dynamically allocated ip address that's fine now this is important part over here i am going to create a integrated with private dns john i am checking it as yes but it can be possible that in your organization you have your separate networking team and they are managing their own dns john so in that case if they are managing their own dns john you should check it as a no and once it is created you have to add the c name record of your sql server into that centralized dns john and once that c name record is created over there 
then anyone from your organization which are connecting through the centralized hub can redirect their DNS can resolve your SQL Server to the correct IP and connect to your SQL Server. But since I am not using any centralized DNS zone, so I am using I am taking it yes and using this newly created private DNS zone. So what is the name of private DNS zone? The name is private link dot database dot windows dot net. So this is the DNS zone which is going to be created in the same resource group and there will be a CNAME record will also get created. So let's go to tags and review and create. It will take some time to get ready. In the meantime, I would like to show you one image which can tell how this networking is working. Okay, in the meantime, the, our deployment is in progress. I would like to show you that how this private endpoint works. So in the right hand side, we have our SQL database. In the SQL database, I have created this private endpoint inside one VNet. This blue line is a VNet. So I have created one private endpoint inside this VNet and this v private endpoint is having a NIC card and that NIC card is assigned with this IP. Okay, so now this IP is assigned to the private endpoint. Now, whatever resource we have inside this VNet will have direct access to this IP. So it's very easy to connect to the SQL Server using this IP or the or the SQL Server name. Now, if you have any other resource deployed in any other VNet at any other region or maybe in the same region in another VNet, or maybe you have on-premises environment and still want to connect to the SQL Server which is deployed in Azure but public access is disabled then how to connect it then you have to use this VNet gateway if you are connecting from on-premises environment or any other VNet you can use this VNet gateway and with the help of this VNet gateway you can connect your VNet point to site or site to site to this VNet gateway and then your Resources which are deployed in your VNet or in the on-premises environment can connect to the private endpoint and resolve to the correct IP. There is one more thing which I want to show you that if you have a VNet and you want to connect to the private endpoint, you just pair this VNet with the central VNet over here where the private endpoint is there. And once you pair it, your peered VNet automatically resolve to the correct IP of the SQL Server and it can connect to the SQL Server using this private endpoint. So this is how this private endpoint works. So now I see in the back that resources are ready. So this private endpoint has been created. If I go to DNS configuration, you can see in the DNS configuration, I got this IP 10.0.0.5 and this is the FQDN which I want to connect which is normal FQDN and over here in the DNS zone let me open the DNS zone you can see there is a A name record I am sorry that I have said uh, C name record it is a A name record A name record has been created for my SQL server with the correct IP address so since this IP address belongs to the same VNet where my VM is present so I can directly connect to the SQL Server using private endpoint. So let me go here and try to connect now. And you can see I am directly connecting to my SQL Server and I can run my queries and I can run whatever I want on my databases. We have reached till end of this course. I would like to say thank you so much and wish you all the very best for your cloud engineering career.